Okay, today we're gonna to show you what we're doing with Theo's squat to get him returning to squatting following his ACL surgery. Now he is at week five and a half, so meaning he's in our week six program and he's doing extremely well. And so week five and a half, he is doing squats. Now what we've got going on here is one of these mini loop bands. That's to help his external rotation, I'll go through that in a minute. He's also just loaded up. So he's only on eight kilos there, 10% of his body weight, that's easy, okay? Um, at this stage, we need to get him squatting, we need to get him that motor pattern going. So we've got a few exercises to do. One is just getting him squatting, which he's doing quite well. So if you go through a squat for me, Theo, what we're looking for with him is, remember, his knee, or well, his ACL knee, is his left one, okay? But remember, his right one is also an old ACL surgery on that one as well. So he's got a bit of wobbliness on both. And the thing with Theo is, keep going for you, mate, is that his squat, okay, we need to really work on his external rotation of his knee because the big thing about his one and why he busted those ACLs probably in the first place is his lack of hip control, which made his knee dive in. So when we are training him, he needs to be making sure that his hip control is of paramount, okay? Obviously, we need to get quads, hammies, glutes, everything working, but I want him training his squat with a little bit of load and focusing on his knee control. So this knee here needs to be over the center of his foot. What Theo tends to pause for you for a second. What he tends to do is because this is his surgery knee, he tends to shift his body weight to his right. Okay, it's very subtle, I can pick it up, but when he squats, he is sitting on his right leg more than his left. We need to correct that, so that's number one. He needs to be saying, okay, I need to move my body weight a little bit more left, so I'm loading this knee correctly, and I'm putting a lot of weight through that left leg, or just as much as the right. The second thing he's gotta be doing is making sure that that knee is rotated out to neutral, okay? He's got a tendency to roll that knee inwards, so when he squats, if he does that, his knee will sit like on the inside of his foot, whereas his right one is sitting more over the middle of his foot. It's, it still needs a little bit of work, that right one, it needs to go out a little bit more, but he needs to focus mostly on his left one. The band is giving him that feedback to push out, okay? So he's pushing out with, that, with his knees, which means he's using his glutes up here, is he externally rotating, okay? Which gives him that motor program, one, strengthening, motor programming to say, when I squat, I want my glutes firing to control my knee, and the mirror is so much good feedback along with this. So if you go through that squat again, he needs to be, go again, out there, okay? Really look, so when he gets to there, his knee's over his foot, come back up again. Um, and the, the thing with this is, if he can focus on both at the same time, that's helpful. Sometimes he just has to focus on his left for a few reps, and then focus on his right, and just keep repeating. Just go again for me, Theo. So stay over on the left, push that left knee out, Good, and come out. And the other good thing, if you look at him this way, he's squatting quite well. Now Theo's squatted before, try that again for me. What we wanna make sure of though, is he's not leaning forward too much. He's doing quite well, nice flat back through here. He's not going down to 90 degrees because he doesn't need to. He's sitting around the 110, and he's letting his knee just go gently forward. His angles are great, okay? So his back angle and a shing angle, are going forward together. There isn't one more forward than the other, really. And so he's just focusing on trying to keep his shoulder over his ankle, all right? And when he squats down, just thinking about his hips going down, all right? Keeping his upper body upright, it'll come forward naturally, but if he focuses on upright, to go again, drops his bum down, then he's gonna do the right position. And he's practiced that quite a bit. Come back up in, that's great. So, do you wanna pop that down? To help him with this, or to try to improve the balance stuff, to try and improve his knee control, to try and improve the feedback from his new ACL, he needs to do some BOSU squats. So let's have a look at that. Okay, BOSU squats. Now, these are really good to help him work out his stability, improve his load left and right, because if he loads too much over the left, the is gonna move that way, if he loads too much right, it's gonna go that way. Then he can focus on his knee control, because if he can do this on an unstable surface, then he'll be much better on a stable surface. So let's try that for me. So he's going to work on trying to get his feet quite wide on the BOSU. So we're looking at a wee bit wide, that's it. And again, he's got to get his knees out over his feet. He's not as wide as he is when he squats with load, but that's fine, so it's going to be easy for him a little bit. But he's got to keep that BOSU level. And now he's got to try and do the squats. Now the trick with this one, you'll find 
that he shakes a lot more because he's got to work out how to keep that balance. It's hard. He's not used to having his knees going out and controlling an unstable surface. He's used to being unstable, but this is going to give him really good feedback through that knee. And so this, as hard as it is, and the, you see the wobbliness there, that's the neuromuscular control. It's not necessarily strength. That will get better over time, and that will just make him so much more stable because he's going to learn and learn and learn and learn with every repetition, and this stuff's got to keep going all the way through. It'll go from a BOSU to then a loaded BOSU with bands and obviously stepping down on one leg. So this one is as awkward as it is and hard as it is. This is awesome to help him with his normal squats. That's a good one. So while he's doing squatting work and trying to return to squatting, he's also doing a little bit of deadlifting. Now, the deadlifting is going to help him with his hamstring strength. It's also going to help him with his knee control because let's face it, his feet and his knees are going to be the same position this way when he squats. So it's another added motor control pattern work that he's going to do. Obviously, when he does a deadlift, he's going to do a lot more hip hinging here than he does in a squat. And he's going to do less knee bending here than he does in a squat. But we need his hamstring stronger. He's had surgery on his hamstrings for the ACL graft. He needs to get this going. And Theo, he hasn't done deadlifts before in his life. He think he did it once before he injured his knee. So this is the, you know, he's done more deadlifts in the last week than he's ever done in his entire life. So he's actually doing really well. At the first, he couldn't do it. But now the motor program's really coming together. If you go through your deadlift for me, Remember, this is a Romanian deadlift, so a hamstring deadlift. He's keeping his back flat there, you can see that. So when he comes through, this is staying nice. He's really hinging at the hips, okay? And his knee's not coming forward. And this gives him that really nice graduated strengthening for the hamstring, okay? And that'll help him with his hip hinging here, help him with his hip thrust down the track, help him with his bridges obviously get that hamstring strong, get his glutes stronger, because we need just basic glute strength, basic hamstring strength at the moment. This is a great one for that. Um, but the thing about this one, a lot of people who have been deadlifting find this really easy to do. They've just got to build up their strength because they're relying on motor program. They've done like 10 years of it before they've injured their ACL. He's done none. So he is going to have to, when the load goes on as far as he goes to kettlebells, he goes to maybe a bar, he's going to have to keep thinking about it every single time because he cannot rely on neuroprogramming just to do the movement just straight off the bat. So go again, he has to think about what he's doing with his hips, what he's doing with his back, what he's doing with his core, where his shoulders are, where his hands are, where his knees are, where his feet are, okay? That's a lot to take in, but he has to do that to build up the sort of reps and sets over a long period of time so it's absolutely automatic, okay? But he's doing a great job. All right, so really important for him at this stage, we are doing single leg balance on the BOSU this time. So what you're gonna notice is he's wobbling quite a little bit. He's gotta learn this, he's gotta program this into his brain to try and keep that from being so wobbly and try and keep his knee out. Now you'll find at the moment, he's really struggling to keep his knee out of his toe. You can see that already, right? He is, that knee is actually sitting on the inside of the foot, not over the middle of the foot. And no matter how hard he tries, he can't get it out. So this is why we're just doing single leg balance at the moment. He's trying to think about it, trying to roll in. The stronger his glutes get, okay, the more this is going to come out. So he's going to program it. And obviously he needs to do the other side as well. Because the other side has had the ACL problem. The other side is also his right side, which is actually not as good as his left side. Because he's a right footer, his left side balance is better. And so his left side is still wobbly as well. You'll notice that this one comes in, okay? So he's struggling to actually get it out. Tips and cues for this one is to actually work on squeezing the glute and externally rotating from the top down. Rather than you trying to work on the foot, try and work on where the problem is. The problem is not the foot, the problem is the glute or the hip. So he needs to work on squeezing that and getting that out and rotating that out over time. So that one he needs to do because it's a wobbly surface that generates that feedback. The other thing he needs to do is a step down toe tap. Now, this one is where he's still not one-legged squatting, okay? We're, we're just doing two-legged squats this week. We're not doing one-legged squats, but he's trying to prepare for it, all right? So if he goes to a step down toe tap, which means he's gonna stand on one leg and he is going to try and move the other. So he's gotta stay in a squat here, a little bit of a squat here, a little bit at the hip, holding that position so his quads are on. Then he's gonna have a bit better time trying to keep that knee out towards me, 
All right, so he's going to step forward and then step back. And what you'll notice is the wobbliness. Now that is the instability of brain to hip to knee, no ACL or new ACL with a tendon graft. And eventually over time what's going to happen is that'll be super stable and he'll be able to do this. Okay, he'll be able to keep it nice and stable. At the moment, um, he has to work pretty hard and eventually, over every week that goes past, this is going to get better and better and better and better. And of course, he's going to start doing proper squats on this and then proper squats on a bow. So, if you want to see how go to the other leg. And that's, um, yep, try that one. Now, what you're going to notice on this is he wobbles as well, but he can keep his knee a little bit more center line because. He's just had a bit more time. This is a fresh ACL. Even though this has had its problems in the past, he's had a bit more time to actually balance on that one with that new ACL. So there's a few from week six, which is five and a half weeks post. See you next time.